If you ever thought about getting a successful mentor or coach and you actually want me, Spectacular Smith, to actually coach you and become your mentor, I'm actually so excited about releasing my online school, Spectacular Academy, where I'm actually going to teach you live once a month different skill sets that's actually going to help you change your life for the better transformational information that I'm going to give you guys access to. I have a formula to success that every single company that I ever touched turned into gold. And I have over 14 companies. Okay. And all of them have the same type of success. So I'm going to teach you everything that the school system should have taught you. You know, everything that I know and how I built these fast growing companies and these award winning companies and show you real curriculums that I'm going to break down. You're going to have access to me. I'm going to be live in the chat rooms. I'm going to be live in the Facebook groups and personal communities that I'm going to give you guys access to of like minded entrepreneurs. So you're not by yourself on this mission. Not only you have me as a coach and a mentor, but you actually have your peer to peer people that's going to push you and root for you on the way to the top. Guys that's on the same exact weight limp that you are on and want the same exact results because my game plan is to change the way the school systems teach and teach you the things that need to make an impact in your life. Things that's going to be a high ticket skill that you can use forever where you don't never have to worry about going broke or not eating at night because once you learn how to market and brand yourself then you can eat for a lifetime you get access to my team and everything if you want to go to my free training just to get a sample of the things that's going to be in my program you can actually go to specmentorme.com or i'm gonna put it in the bio only take a certain amount of people every single month so reserve your seat and do not procrastinate because you might just miss out. Now let's get to the podcast. What's up, everybody? This is Spectacular Smith and welcome to the Spectacular Experience. So today we have Spectacular. You guys have been all up in our inboxes just really asking about him and really inquiring about when this session was going to take place and it is here. So thank you for dealing with our uh, technical issues. You know, it happens all the time, especially during this time. And we are, we are determined to make it work. So we're going to get through it. So I do want to introduce Spectacular to you, even though I feel like he needs no introduction, especially for those of you who are from my era, we know who Spectacular is, but he is so much more than uh, what we love him for. He has done some amazing things. So for those of you who are fairly new to hearing about Spectacular, I'm pretty sure you know who Grumpy Cat is. Let me tell y'all, uh-huh. Grumpy Cat is here because of Spectacular. I think we all kind of seen that trending and you could just see that uh, with social media um, and with marketing and just brilliance, how easy it is to just get the attention to larger audiences. And he's been able to do that. So I do want to talk about Spectacular's future, I mean, past, even though he's going to talk a little bit more about it. But he started and learned that he was going to be an entrepreneur when he started selling candy at school. I don't know if there's any other uh, candy hustlers out there, but he was making about $2,000 a week. And he noticed that he had something with him. Um, Also, he was a great dancer. He started working with his father, who became the manager of Pretty Ricky. So again, those of you who know Spectacular didn't even need to know the name. But for those of you who are new, um, he was in the rap group Pretty Ricky. And um, past that, past that, he created the amazing company AdWizard, which is now um, just bringing all of our artists and corporations and everything to the front lines when it comes to social media. So Spectacular has been called the top marketing guru to watch. He has been called the greatest and most inspiring entrepreneur of our generation. And he has an estimated net worth of $65 million. Hello, who else to teach you better about entrepreneurship than Spectacular? So 
You all know about net worth. If you are unfamiliar with how to evaluate your own net worth, we have a course on that. But I'm going to go ahead and let Spectacular take it from here and just walk you through his journey. So Spectacular, let's start from the beginning. First, let me make sure everyone can see you. Everyone say hello to Spectacular in the comments. But let's just talk about uh, just your, your the beginning. How did this all begin for you? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, it all started from from me being um, someone that loved sales from the beginning of time. Like I was in third grade selling ten thousand dollars worth of candy as a little cute kid on the block selling chocolate candy bars. Get my mom to help me, her friends and going door to door to uh, being someone that went to 11 uh, at 11 years old, start transitioning into doing the same exact thing. Uh, and realized that, you know, in the third grade, when I made over $10,000 and you have those little brochures, they literally gave me a bubblegum beeper in, in a yo-yo for $10,000. So I was like, yo, I know I just got robbed. And, uh, and from that point forward, I was like, you know what, I'm going to start working for myself. You know, I worked for them and I, and I got robbed, how we robbed in, uh, in the third grade. So when I got to sixth grade, I opened back up shop and start selling candy again. Um, started making from like $1,500 to $2,000 a week um, and started killing it. From that point forward, I realized that entrepreneurship was was kind of my journey. And then I got into Pretty Ricky, kind of got forced into Pretty Ricky. I never really wanted to be a rapper at all. I kind of uh, got forced into that. But but for the most part, you know, it was a blessing in disguise because even though I never wanted to be a rapper, you know, I have some timeless music that people still love to this day. And uh, and it just makes it a great experience. And especially for me being uh, someone who kind of, con- I would say, kind of conquered the music industry for my for my generation, you know, I'm a public figure. So I kind of took that ability to be able to just get certain meetings and capitalize off that. But I mean, as any entrepreneurs, it's a struggle regardless, no matter what you say, no matter what you do, you can be famous, not famous, you know, it's the pros and cons to everything. You know, somebody who doesn't have uh, a personal brand, people might look at them like, oh, who are you? But if somebody is famous, they were like, oh, well, you know, I know you for this. Would it, like, how are you going to help me with this? Like, they don't take you serious. So it's pros and cons to everything. You know, I had major meetings with a lot of big name people and they never did the deal with me. So I literally wasted my time. So they took the meeting just because, but they never took me serious. They always went with the guy, the, you know, the white guy with the button up and the tie on and the, and the blazer on. And uh, you get me to come in there and I literally can do better than anybody you can put in front of me. And they still went with the other, the, you know, with the guy, the white guy, you know, with the with the Harvard MBA, you know, and uh, and that discouraged me, but it just never let me down. You know, I feel like whatever you do in life, you got to keep going. You know, persistent take away um, resistance. And once I realized that, I start. I never let anybody tell me no, no matter what it was. No is a temporary yes in my eyes, no matter what you do. Or if you in a situation where you continuously getting a no, then it's setting you up for for a yes in another place. And when I realized that I kind of looked at business differently um, to now where I don't let a lot of things stop me, no matter what it is. You know, it can be no from a bank about a business loan. It can be no from an investor. Uh, It could be no for a business deal. No matter what I do, I figure out what is the benefit and the lesson in this situation, no matter what that uh, turn down or that humbling experience was. It's like, what can I do to learn from this to become a better individual, a better entrepreneur, a better father, a better uh, friend, you know, and figure out that and start growing from that. Because when you're growing, it's uncomfortable. You know, when you're scratching, you know, yourself out, it's uncomfortable to stretch. It's uncomfortable to learn and grow things that you never learned about or invest in things that you have no idea about, but you know is great for you. So you decide to take that leap of faith and jump in, you know, like this academy you guys are in right now. Um, and when you first got into it, I'm pretty sure you didn't know much about it or you just learned a little bit about it, but you had to make a decision to jump in. So I applaud everybody, you know, who's looking to consistently learn is either you're, you're dying or you're growing, you know, is either or, you know, is no, is no in the middle. So consistently learn and and figure out a way to help others as you're growing and you're becoming a better person and joining communities like this, 
where you can, you know, each one teach one and you can push each other, leave each other accountable. When you down, you bring somebody up, you know, when that person is, and when, when that person is up, you know, they look down and bring somebody up and, and that cycle uh, continuously go. And as you're learning something, you realize that, okay, with my surroundings, I'm as strong as my weakest link. So we got to make sure everybody that's in our facility and that's in our group and our power circle that we make sure whatever we know, they know too, because if they have something that could benefit, that could be beneficial and you put them up on that and they're, they're able to articulate that to somebody else, then they'll be able to build that relationship with that person that then in returns bring back value as a whole, uh, as a collective. Absolutely. Um, one thing we talked about that I want to dig in a little bit, because I know a lot of people are probably dealing with that now and just in general, because you said, you know, you just have to find a way. And mm-hmm. when people are constantly telling you no, or you're feeling as if, um, you know, you're not qualified enough, and maybe that's bringing down your, your self-esteem. And I know a lot of people also deal with imposter syndrome. Uh, what mm-hmm. was that for you that just made you keep going? You talked about community, but what was it also within you that allowed you to just keep going even after hearing a million no's? Well, for me, it was whatever that end result was for me, you Mm -hmm. know, and that's the bigger picture. Right now I'm just being battle tested. No matter what I go through, it's like God trying to figure out how hard, how much you want this, you know, are you ready for this and put you through certain tests to see if you pass it. And I think a lot of things in life is tests, no matter what you say, what you do, when certain things present itself, it's a test. How bad do you want it? You know, are you willing to work for, you know, 15 hours a day, 16 hours a day? You know, are you willing to sacrifice certain things that you love and cherish uh, for a temporary uh, defeat just to be able to get that, you know, that uh, infinity gain and understanding and realizing that this is part of the process and falling in love with the with the process instead of the end result. And I think that's what so many people do. You know, we look on Instagram, we see people winning, but nobody who's winning is really showing the struggles. You know, all the times that people shut them down, all the times that they felt like they was about to go file bankruptcy, all the times where they like got nothing in their bank account. And they just like, what the hell am I about to do? You know, when something happened to their family and they still got to get up and go to this meeting and some tragic just happened, but they got to keep pushing. And that's the things that make you resilient. And when you start putting another lens on life, you kind of start thinking about it differently and you stop letting the nonsense get in the way of your greatness and you becoming world class as an individual. Um, Because I feel like God put everybody on this earth for a reason. You just got to figure out what is that reason, you know, and you got to really dig into that and, uh, and, and use that as your motivator. You know, sometimes you might not feel like getting up in the morning. You might not feel like, you know, going to that meeting or you might not feel like investing that last dollar, but everything serves its purpose. You got to see like, okay, what is my gut feeling telling me? And then take action on it. I think too many times people like wait for that perfect moment and it never be perfect. You'll never have enough money in your bank account. You'll never have enough relationships. You'll never have, you know, enough of anything, right? But you got to take what you have and work what you have till you can get what you want to have and continue that process of, of, you know, learning, making the failure, analyzing, adjust, and keep that cycle going. Uh, but the, the point is to keep, keep moving. That that's is, the ultimate that, goal. That is so good to keep moving and to, and to make the mistakes. So that's the only way you're going to learn. Like I noticed that, you know, people, when, when they try to immediately go from zero to like 100, they miss all of the lessons in between. So they mm-hmm. crash faster instead of going through step by step, building your way up, you know, making those failures, learning from them. Because, you know, they're not really failures if, if you're learning a, a lesson from it. Um, so I know a lot of members in our group, you guys talk about vision boards. I don't know if you write down your why. I know some people say financial freedom, but like, what does that mean? You know, really being specific about that. Um, can you talk a little bit about fear for yourself? Um, I know we talked a little bit about like, I guess, fear of failure. But what were some other fears when you made big moves and big decisions? Well, 
Well, first of all, I want to know where's the comments at? I like that. I like to look at the comments when I'm doing like interviews and things like that. Can you even see the comments? I thought it would be on the chat, but are we streaming to the chat? What are we streaming towards? I'm going to give you the link and you'll be able to see those comments. Oh, I'll put it, I see it right here. I see the link. I think this is it. Oh, no, that's my company profile. Where's the link? I want to see. I want to see who I'm talking to. I also just oh, you put it on YouTube. Got mm-hmm. you. Okay, okay, I get it. All right, so you put I it on also YouTube. Have, um, I dropped the link in the chat section for you right here in Zoom, so you can grab it from there too. Mm, okay, let me look at this because I want to see what the people got to say. Because I don't know. I don't like talking to myself. <laughs> But yeah, just to uh, just to give you some uh, some insight based on fear, um, I feel like I'm fearless, man. I don't I don't feel like you know a lot of things a lot of things get to me. I feel like you know the definition of fear is false evidence appearing real, and by me understanding that uh, terminology, I understand that is is not real. You know, you might think that is is something that's going to tear you down or something that's going to like. Uh, crush you, but man, after every storm, the sun comes out. And when I realized that, nothing, nothing feared me. Like I, I never had any fear at all, no, no matter what you do. Like because I realized that the greatest, the greatest risk you take, you get the greatest reward. And without no risk, like you're not gonna get any reward out of life at all. So I don't try to be fearful at all. You know, I heard a saying that Will Smith said, "God put the greatest opportunities on the other side of fear." So all that stuff resonates with me. You know, it resonates with me deeply. And I just try to tell everybody, like, don't be fearful. Like, forget it. Just go for it. You know, and once you go for it, like, it's nothing that's going to stop you from achieving anything you want. The only person that can stop you is you. It's not the fear. You know, it's, I mean, it's not, it's not anything that, that, that's behind. I mean, it's not anything that's in front of that fear. Everything that's in behind it is what you're looking for. But nobody ever makes it on the other side because they're too scared. But it's nothing to be scared about. It's literally like, you know how they have different animals that like, they have certain things that like, like a peacock. Like you see a peacock and the, and the feathers just spread all big. You're like, oh my God. But then when you realize like, if you put it down, it's like, oh, my, this little old thing, what that's going to do to me? Nothing. So- <laughs> It scares you and you think like, oh, my God, it looked like a bunch of eyeballs on the feather. You're like, oh, my God, what is that? But in reality, it's just a peacock. Like, it's nothing. It's not going to hurt you. It's not going to harm you. It's putting up this defense to scare you, not to get past what you need to get past to get to what you got. And that's why a lot of people never get to their goals and their dreams because they count. They, they literally talk themselves out of their greatness. It's like, no, I shouldn't do this. They start blaming people. Oh, no, it's her fault. It's his fault. Oh, and when I get this, I'll start. When I get this so much money, I'm going to take off. Or oh, this business idea I had, you know, when I get the right people that's working for me, I'm going to take off with that. And everybody figure out a way to talk themselves out of greatness. So fear, it means nothing. You know, jump, jump, do what you got to do and take a leap of faith and invest in yourself. You can never make the wrong investment in yourself no matter what you do in life. If you count on yourself, you can invest in others. They'll leave you. They'll go do something else. But in terms of investing in yourself, you can never go wrong because you will always have that. You're your greatest asset. Oh, that's so good. You're preaching in here. You should, I wish you could see the comments. So if you can pull those up and see what they're saying. No, I can see them. Uh-huh. I can see them. This yeah. must be right now. And I have a couple of broadcasts hosted by Spectacular in his share and leveling up on social media, definitely intangible. Yep, let's go. I can see now. Absolutely. I, I saw somewhere at some point you were just talking about um, just skills. You talked a little bit about investing in yourself and how your skills mean more, honestly, more than your degrees. Um, yes. Talk about that because I know some people, especially women, I mean, for some reason, it's like we, we like to follow the guidelines. So if a position says we need a certain degree, it's like, oh, you know, we, all, we automatically rule ourselves out. Can you just talk a little bit more about the skills piece and how important that is? Mm-hmm. Well, skill sets is everything. Skill sets is everything. I mean, if you don't have a skill set, you're literally going to get taken over by artificial intelligence. You know, at some point in time, you got to build a skill set. And when I hire, like, I, 
I mean, nine out of 10, I don't even look at a resume because I really don't, I really don't really care about what degrees you have. I want to know if you can do the job. Can you do the job? Show me that you can do the job. Let me see, throw you in the water, test you out. Okay, you can swim, let's go. You know, that's what people want, you know? And, and honestly, people are understanding more and more and more that the degree is literally a placeholder. It's like, it's, it, it means nothing if you really think about it. If you're not going to be a doctor or, or a scientist or a lawyer, things that they force you to have a degree for, then I feel like it's, it's for no reason. You know, I, I feel like the school systems was built. Do you know why the school systems was, was built? Do you know? Speak on it. All right. So I'm going to say this to you. I'm going to educate everybody. So the school systems was built by Henry Ford, Dale Carnegie, and Napoleon Hill. They all came together to create a school board because they had these factories and nobody wanted to work in the factories because before they came up with the school systems, everybody was entrepreneur. Everybody wanted their own thing going. So they're like, how can we get more people to work for us because we're short, we have a shortage of staff. So they created this school system. And what they did was they created a school board and all of Rockefeller, all those people was on the board. And when they created this school board, they made it where they had this curriculum where the people that was working for them at the, at the plants, they can have some place for their kids to go. All right. And it trains you on how to be the best employee right off the jump. You come in, it's like you come in at this time, you know, the bell ring, you go leave for lunch, you come back. And then after that, the bell rings again, you leave, you go work some more. And then the bell ring, you go home, you repeat the cycle. Okay. And that's when, when you think about the schools, they don't teach you anything that's going to literally impact you. They teach you a bunch of nothing, right? It's like when you go get one of those gift bags, you go to like one of these events and they stuff a bunch of bull crap in there and you go home, you're like, what am I going to do with all this? That's what school is. They give you a bag full of nothing, all right? A sand with seashells. And then when you go there and, and, and you learn all this stuff and then you leave and then you get into the real world and you're like, well, hold up. What the hell did I learn? Is what did I learn? Like I did, I learned nothing that can benefit my life. I didn't learn credit. I didn't learn money management. I didn't learn how to how to how to buy a house, how to manage a mortgage. I didn't learn uh, credit. I didn't learn leadership. How to deal with people, anxiety. Like I didn't learn anything that I really need. And think about it. You got three hundred sixty-five days times freaking how many years that you are in school. Of course, you don't count the, the weekends, but I'm just saying like, you got a lot of time that you're in school. And literally, it only take what, a week or even a day to really go over the, prelim the preliminary stuff that you need to learn for credit. That could be one day out of the year, one day out of the year to how to buy a house. Like a lot of people that get their tax returns and they go buy a bunch of dumb stuff, but they renting, right? But at the same time, if you go buy a house, then you can use it as a tax credit. You can use it as, as a, a negotiation tool. You can do a lot of things, right? You can get a, um, you can get a, um, a HELOC, you know, and, and basically take the equity that you have and use that as a line of credit and be able to use that to go invest in other things. Or like, it's a bunch of things that you can do that they just don't even teach you about. And you can take one day out of the year to teach on all these things that would make a huge impact, a huge impact. But they don't want you to learn that. They want you to be the best employee, not the best boss. All right. Now, if everybody run around here being the best boss, then who's going to be the employees? Who's going to mop the floors? Who's going to pick up the trash? So the people who do become entrepreneurial, those are the people who understand and get it. Like, hold up, I'm being bamboozled, you know, and even like the greatest entrepreneurs, they understood that. You got Bill Gates. He dropped out of Harvard, went there for few months, dropped out. Mark Zuckerberg dropped out. Uh, I'm out. Like, but if that showed you that schools is such a huge impact, then they would have graduated just to invent what they invented. But no, they didn't need to. They realized that it was wasting their time. Obama just paid off his college debt, right? So you mean to tell me that you're going to put me in school for four years for digital marketing, all right? And once I get on the fourth year, I can't even, I can't even use the shit from the first year that I learned, oh my God, that's crazy. But you still gonna make me pay for that first year, second year, third year on information I can't even use no more. And then when I get out of school, 
right? When I get out of school, I think I'm a, I have a job that's going to be waiting for me. But then you go to get a job and you come to somebody like me. I was like, okay, well, show me your results. What have you done so far? And you're like, well, sorry, sorry, Miss Keisha. I can't hire you because you have no experience. But Miss Keisha was like, well, damn, I got this degree that I spent a hundred grand on. How am I going to get the experience if you won't hire me? So now you go into all this debt and you can't even do nothing with this sheet of paper. I know people right now that's literally in school and doing all this stuff and still can't get a job or they work their whole life to get their dream job and get fired because of COVID-19. It's happening. Life is real. <laughs> Life is real right now. That lit you up, first of all, and you lit us all up. The, the, the comment is lit. The comment section is lit right now because we all can relate to this. I mean, I know there's many of our members who are stuck with student loans and are dealing with exactly what you said. Um, I spoke to someone recently moved to Tuscan for a job just to get fired because they eliminated the position and don't know what to do. Uh, now, so entrepreneurship now. is is the is the is the route she's going. But I have Come a question for you. I'm um, kind of shifting gears a little bit because I saw. Sorry, uh, whoever ans asked this question, I did see it. Can't remember the name, but um, they wanted to know your thoughts on generational wealth and was anything passed down or taught to you um, in your upbringing about generational wealth. Generational wealth. That's all I preach. That's all I preach is generational wealth because at the same time, if you're doing something right now that you can't pass down to your kids, then what are you doing? It's either you build your own dreams or you get stuck building somebody else's. It's either you make yourself rich or you get stuck making somebody else rich. Putting all the time and effort on the things that ain't going to give you a, a compound interest on your time and your energy. And that's a fact. So I feel like if you're going to take a risk, take a risk on yourself. What's the worst can happen? What's the worst can happen, right? You live check, check the check for your whole life and go back to your normal job. Or at least you tried. You tried. You did what you had to do. You, you took a swing at the back. Or you don't have to even be the, the person who's literally in the forefront. You can be the person right under the main person, the visionary, the person that's doing all the marketing, the brand in the face. And you can be the number two. And that could be your wealth path. But not the person that's all the way down at the bottom. Like that, that's, that's called a pyramid scheme. The CEO gets rich. Then you got these people that's right underneath them. They get the money. And then everybody else, they don't get nothing. The further down you go, that's called a pyramid scheme. Not what we got going on. We trying to teach and, and give you guys the real game, the real knowledge that you can't Google, you can't YouTube, you can't read half of this stuff in books. But you got to stop focusing on the what and focus on the who. And right now, a lot of you guys that's in here right now is focusing on the who, where you're taking the right step forward in life. Focus on who you want to model after and figure out what are the breadcrumbs of success. Success leave clues. So who has the breadcrumbs to success for you? And who do you want to follow? You got to figure it out. It's a million different personalities, a million different people. Figure out who resonates the best with you. When you find that person, you freaking lock down on them. You figure out how can you add the most value to that person? How could you learn from that person? Subscribe to their email list. Subscribe to their, to their Facebook, to their Instagram, to their YouTube, to their Snapchat, to everything, LinkedIn, everything. Be obsessive over that person because once you are and you start learning you know, how, how they're doing what they're doing. And you start building a relationship with that person. 19 Keys, one of my boys said, if you want to, if you want to get an entrepreneur attention, you want to flirt with an entrepreneur, show them a receipt, <laughs> show them a receipt of what they're selling, support them, you know, and that's how you build a relationship. Go support them. You want to, you want to be mentored by somebody. You want to be coached by them. Show them you buying their products, get involved in what they have going on. Then they can see that you're serious and you start building that relationship. And as you start building it, all of a sudden, they want to start helping you even more because now you're a familiar face. People like to connect with people that's like-minded, that think like them, that move like them. So if you're around somebody and you're having a meeting with them, shadow them in a meeting, right? You see them slouch back, you slouch back. If they upright, you upright. They got their legs crossed, you got your legs crossed. People like people that's similar to them, right? And it's funny, but that's reality, right? If somebody's all loud and you get loud and like, oh, I like that guy. You know, it's loud just like me. But if you loud and then you all quiet and you like a little mouse, it's the opposite. 
like, I don't know. I don't think he liked me. I don't know. Or, or, if, or if that person is quiet and you're a loud person, you get quiet. Now y'all both quiet. Y'all just, you know, talk real soft. You talk soft. He talks soft. It's like, I like that guy. And why? Because you're similar to him. You're similar to her. Right. And, and that's how you kind of build. That's the like psychological around like building relationships and, you know, things like that. I hope y'all catching these gems. I should have told y'all to, to bring your pen and notepad. I'm pretty sure I did in one of those emails, but he he just took us to school. And like one thing I would challenge, because I mean, it was very, it, it was subtle the way he said it, but, you know, really watching someone because mentorship doesn't have to be knowing someone in person, working with them. And I don't know, having these monthly stuffy meetings, um, like he said, just observing and watching someone and watching what they do. So I would challenge all of you today. If there's someone that you love, and that you want to work with and you have purchased their products and you want to get in touch with them, go to their website or go to their DMs and let them know, I love your product. Just get the conversation Mm -hmm. started. And I think you will see an immediate return on what he just said. Um, I can tell you for sure, Tiffany sees it all the time. We see it in Literature Academy when you email us to customer support and you're telling us about what you love or what you would Mm -hmm. like to do. We forward it, we share it with each other and Some of our experts come from those connections. It's actual dream builders who we want to support and we bring in front of the audience. So I just want to thank you so much, Spectacular, for for mentioning that. Um, I know we started a little late, so I don't know how much time we have with you, but I do want to dig a little deep into um, just your entrepreneurship journey. So when you found out that, just kind of walk us through the beginning. When did you realize you had this idea? How did it begin and how did you just blast off with it? So in terms of what? Social media marketing. So for me, it was more of, I was always a person that, I was always a person that understood social media and the power of it, even from the MySpace days, Black Planet days. I know how old you guys are here. You know, I want to date myself, you know, but those those different apps were so powerful. The party line, you know, uh, giving out your phone number and talking to your fans like I un- always understood the power of the connection to the people. And and that's what social media is. It gives you a direct connect to people. And it's sad, but the more numbers you have, the more valuable you look into a person's eyes. So I knew I had to figure out growth strategies, no, no matter if it was me or if it was, like you said earlier, a grumpy cat or, you know, or building a brand. Um, I know that numbers matter and what was going to get you the numbers was social media. So I knew that I had to learn these different platforms. I had to figure out was, what was the... I would say psychological, like, like how could I persuade people to do certain things with social media and the people who understands that those are the influencers. Those are the people that make that goes viral because they know that you're going to share. They know you're going to like, you're going to comment. All right. And once you learn those different skill sets, then you're able to start building not only your brand, but your company brand. And, and everything simultaneously grows and that gives you more credibility in the market. And it makes you more of a thought leader and makes you more credible and it makes you have more social proof that people want to deal with you. People want to be with the who's who. If you look popping, guess what? If you got things going on, I want to be a part of that because I got things going on too. We both got things going on. I want to be in the winner's circle. But if you look like you got 400 followers, but you popping, guess what? You ain't popping. <laughs> you ain't popping with them 400 followers. That's just how people think, no matter if you really are popping. So we got to understand that this is what the people want and we got to give them what they want. So we got to go and learn and master to create a personal brand for yourself. So when people are Googling you, people are YouTubing you, people are you know asking about you, even like even the, the, the personal uh, IP that you gain, you know, on based on building relationships, that's followers too. Right. You building a relationship, having one on one. I come and talk to you, to, to, you know, your, your audience. And guess what? No matter if I know you, if I don't know you, we building a relationship right now, even all because now me, and you right now, we've been on here for how long? What? 20, 30 minutes. No matter what, we had this much FaceTime regardless, you know, and even podcasts. That's another hack. 
right? Building relationships. You say, hey, mister, I see what you got going on. Or, hey, missus, I see what you're doing. I really love what you're doing. I've been following you. And get all the jewels out of them. This is the best way to get your competition and suck all the damn jewels out of them and say, hey, you know, if I'm in a real estate industry, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go start a real estate podcast and I'm going to go interview all the people that does real estate and I'm going to ask them all the key things I want to ask so I can literally get all those gems and implement it into my business. And not only that, but I'm building real estate relationships. So now if I need anything, I have resources that I can tap into to get whatever I want. So not only I'm asking them for all they Jews and all they gain, I'm like, yeah, so what was the best thing you ever did? What was the worst thing? What do you regret? All right, what would you have done if you was in my shoes? All right, when you first started your company, what was three things that helped you go to the next level that nobody knows? And you start asking these different questions and you start getting real life feedback and answers to help accelerate the process for yourself. Sorry, I was on mute there. There's a few people that were asking about your social media tips. And I mean, I, I feel like it doesn't get better than that. So if you guys have any specific questions about social media, please let me know. But I do have some questions jumping um, in the comments right now. I'm going to jump with uh, Jewel. She said, I was totally surprised by the amount of content you shared on mastering social media impact. Did you get any feedback asking why do you share so much? Did I get feedback? on why I share so much. What, what exactly does that mean? I guess criticism. Um, so do people kind of wonder if there's something, I guess, wrong with that or do they advise you not to share so oh, much? Oh yeah, you know it's crazy? I don't know how many people are black in here, but I'm pretty sure it's probably a lot. But with black people, we got taught the game is to be sold, not told. Don't introduce them to the plug. And a lot of times people see why I'm mad in life and they see I'm sharing and I'm helping and they trying to, it kind of like step back and kind of, you know, look at me like, what is his motive? Like, that's how people feel. They like, what you getting out of this? What you want? Why are you telling me all this? Like I talked to someone who who's on, who's on movies, big films. And I heard she had a program. So I said, listen, you know, I really want to help you out and show you all the ropes. I was like, you know what? I did $1.2 million dollars. Uh, last month for my online school, I can show you how to do the same. And, you know, she ended the conversation with, why you want to help me? I was like, well, damn, like, it's not even normal for us to even share information and help each other without having a motive, you know, and, and that's what I want to break that, right? I want to break all the different things that we got taught. You know, I feel like that got implanted into our culture to confuse us, to divide and conquer us, you know, because who the hell came up with that? Why can't I share what makes an impact in my life to somebody else so it can make an impact in their life. Like, why is that a, a, a thing with us? Like, why is it not, you know, help this person to help this person to help this person? Because that becomes a tributary to the culture. Because once you feed into one person, then it feeds into the next. And then once you realize, I mean, once people see that you're sharing, then they realize that they trip it by not sharing. Right. So now they start sharing and now everybody's sharing. And guess what? It makes it better for everybody. You know, not everybody is getting information that nobody knows about, that know, that 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 you're holding dear to your heart. For what? For what reason? Right now, you guys got homework. Anything that you got in your phone right now that you know somebody's struggling with, that you know can help them, literally go out, reach out to at least five people and send them to them for no reason. Say, hey, I see you working on a T-shirt line. I got a manufacturer overseas. Here go the number. His name, James. Tell him I sent you. That's it. And do that to five people. Now, guess what's going to happen? Sooner or later, it's going to come back around that either that person going to talk about the great deed you did for them or they're going to figure out a way like, hey, I see you give me that shirt plug. What you working on? What you need help with? And nine out of 10, you probably need help with something that they can help with that they probably would have never helped you with because they have the game is to be sold, not told mindset. And the reality is each one teach one If my connection should be your connections, you know, and that's what I realized because I used to get around these, the, the more wealthier people I got around, I realized that they were like, yo, Spec, what you need help with? I was like, oh, yeah. oh well, let me introduce you to Jim. Jim's over there. Like, he can help you out. I get on the phone with Jim. Jim's like, oh, what's up, Spec? Oh, I really like this guy. You should meet Mary. All right, get on the phone with Mary. Oh, what's up, Mary? Stop by. Oh, Spec, come on, stop by. Oh, I want you to meet Bill. Bill is over here. He would love you. And then, like, now Bill is in, like, and by the time I, I turn around, I got every single connection I need and I didn't even ask for it. 
They just seen I was a great person and they started sharing resources with me just based off my needs and my challenges. So I feel like we should do the same. Amen to all of that. I mean, people are, I, I don't know if you can look at your phone, but they are like blowing up in the comments just about, you know, these simple tips and it does, it goes a long way. And one thing I can say when people share, just because you share that information doesn't mean they're going to do anything with it. So it's not being mm -hmm. taken from you because it's all about habits and behaviors. So all this information that he's given to you, he just said you have homework. I really want you all to think of five people that you can reach out to and connect with someone else and you will see the return on that. There's sharing is caring. I know it's, it sounds cheesy and you will always get a return uh, for the information that you share. Um, mm -hmm. Let me see. We had some questions around branding and business naming. Can you talk mm -hmm. a little bit about how important that is or what's more important if you, if you have a different... Mm -hmm. Oh, look at the cat. <laughs> Look, special appearance. <laughs> that is too cute. Summer. Summer, summer, summer. So what was the question again? Summer distracted me. I see. Summer came over here and was like, let me have a moment. Um, mm -hmm. No, the question was about, around branding and choosing yeah. a business name. Um, how important is it getting that right in the beginning? Yeah, super, super, super. Um, I would definitely say it's something that means a lot. Uh, but it doesn't mean a lot. And and when I say that, I mean this. You know, a lot of times people go and they fall in love with, you know, the name they came up with. But majority of the times, the name really doesn't mean nothing. You know, if you look at what's a Twitter, what's a Nike, what's an Uber? Like, what what is that? You know, it doesn't really mean nothing, right? But when you step into it, you need to step into it. Brand the crap out of it. You know, wear it proudly. You know, let everybody know about it, right? And then when you're choosing a name, you want to look at, pull up the top 10 people in your niche. Who is the top 10 people? Go look at their names. How many syllables do they have? Like, see what the common, the common um, uh, traits are in each one of them. Go see if it's two syllables, three syllables, four syllables, two words, three words. What is that? And go see... What is the, the, the common traits on each one of those? And then that's when you start creating your name. And then as you create your name, then you figure out which ones is the best. And you go crowdsource opinions. Go post it on your Instagram, on your Facebook, on your Twitter. And once you post it on those, then you're able to get the feedback from real time from the people you love and support or the people that you, that you know you appreciate their opinions. And you go put A, B, C, D. And then you say, hey, which one is the best? And they will tell you, last thing you want to do is go and launch a whole product that nobody gives a damn about. There's no demand for it, okay? We need to stop saying what we love and what we think is the best and go make sure that's what the people want. You want people to be looking for your product. You ever thought about something like, man, if they had this, I would, I would, be, I would buy that in a heartbeat. Boom, there go your invention. You know it's a demand for it. But so many times people get the brand names, they launch everything, and then like they start selling and they, and they sell, in, in the music industry, they, they, they sell um, cardboard. <laughs> you know, they don't go platinum, they sell cardboard, right? And, and it's like you wasted all this time, energy, money, branding, and all this, and nobody wants your product. So you want to crowdsource your idea. You want to crowdsource your designs, you want to crowdsource your branding and get a get a core collective group to beta test and see what the people like, you know, because the last thing you really want to do is put a lot of time and energy in something that ain't going to make no impact to nobody. And you wasted all your time, your money. And that's why I tell people all my ideas. So, so many people be so scared and they hold all their ideas. I don't want to tell nobody, sign the NDA. And I, man, listen, people have been holding on to their multi-million dollar deal for a lifetime. They not running off with yours, right? So you better off telling everybody and their mama about your idea to get real life feedback to see if it's even good or not. If you don't tell nobody, how could you even see if people like it or not? Like when I do my ideas, I tell everybody so I can see, I, like I look at their response. Like, oh, I'm about to do this and, and like look at them and see how they respond. Is it, it more, if it's like, oh, you you what? You you doing that already? Or, or, or one of those like, oh yeah, I'm about to do this. Like, oh, where? Okay, that's dope. Oh, come on. Now, you know, you, you head down the wrong path if that's the response. So 
it's just different things like that. So when you decide you do want a brand, just make sure whatever you're branding is something that the people want. Um, do your homework on the competition. Who's the top in the market? What are they doing? What makes them different? And I like to take all the people that's doing amazing things, the top 10 people, and I like to take the best of the best from each one of them. And then I put, you know, what I'm the best at on top of that. And that way you already have a semi advanced model um, before it even comes out. People can look at it and say, dang, I, I thought this was popping already or this looked like it's already on. And that's kind of what you want. Uh, when you're going to look at their website and go look at the emails and how that's set up and what some of the copy they have around and how they have it set up and positioning themselves in the market. How does their logo look? And you can kind of model after that and mimic at the success. Well, I am so glad that we are blessing your lives. I'm just seeing all the comments and um, just nothing but positivity and people just saying, I'm glad I skipped lunch for this. I'm supposed to be <laughs> back at work. But they're, they're tuning in to all the information that you're sharing. Um, mm -hmm. Someone was saying, can you mentor my son? So, Spectacular, can we just talk a little bit about how people can get in touch with you, where they can follow you? Um, because, you know, one of the advice you shared is just following people, that that also helps, but also talk about, you know, ways people can learn from you. Yeah, so um, actually I have a masterclass tonight. So if anybody wanna join my masterclass tonight, all you guys gotta do is go to spectacularmasterclass.com. Uh, it starts actually, it starts, well, if you want double, double trouble spec, it starts at 6 p.m. Pacific time zone today. So if you guys want to catch my free training um, and at the end of the training, I talk about my online business school, which pretty much teaches you guys about everything under the sun um, that you need to be able to master business well um, from literally starting your business from zero from scratch, showing you guys how to come up with the idea, how to literally launch your product to six to seven figures. Uh, and also, if you don't want to launch a product, then we teach you how to sell other people's products that's popping already and get just as much as the owner uh, in revenue and teach you everything from marketing, branding, sales, uh, dealing with different personalities. Uh, we talk about um, marketing, social media growth, uh, credit, um, pretty much everything. Like one of my students, um, went up like 100, 110 points in six days off of some of the strategies. And we do all our, our school stuff based on multimillionaires. So if you're a millionaire mentor, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're a millionaire mentor, we get you to teach into the academy. So I'm in there. I got millionaire mentors that's in there. So guys who's killing it in sales, marketing, these guys doing multi-millions of dollars in revenue. Uh, we teach based on case studies. Everything you pretty need, pretty much need, take it to the next level. You guys can jump in, learn about it more. I do a whole hour, I think like an hour and 30 minutes, two hour presentation, uh, absolutely free on how to automate your accounts, how to monetize your social media, uh, and you know how to, how to take your social media to the next level. That's what it's about. So anybody wanna get in touch with me? Anybody wanna get in touch with me? I am spectacular on all social media platforms, or you guys can, um, Text me, 786-661-1224. Once again, 786-661-1224. You can text me the hashtag. Nah, you ain't even got to text me the hashtag. Just go ahead and text me. <laughs> just, just text them. Let me make sure I have that number right. I have 786-661-1224. Yes. All Hit right. me up. Spectacularmasterclass.com if you want to join the training tonight in a few hours to get double shot of spectacular <laughs> and we go make it double, <laughs> double up on them. That's hilarious. Um, I guess my question for you is for that masterclass, will there be a replay or do they have to catch it live? Um, How about you have to catch sign it live. It. Yeah. Sign up for it just in case he happens to change his mind, but sign up for it just so you can get the information. Um, maybe yeah. you can squeeze in and get a bit of it, but otherwise follow him on social media and definitely um, send him a text and that'll get you right. the spectacular. Right. So yeah, just hit me up. Um, make sure you just register. We do emails too. So we have another one, just opt in your email. Even if you can't make it, opt in your email. And then once, once you opt in your email, we'll send you some emails based on like, if we got any availability or anything for the next one and get you to the next masterclass if we ever do one again. I usually do these like every every seven, eight months. So make it tonight, make it happen. 
you see, you see how we treat y'all. We made sure we had spectacular on a special night so that y'all can get locked in. Seven. Hey. Oh gosh, we can't let Tiffany hear that. <laughs> we <try laughs> going every month, so she would be like, "All right, y'all, seven, eight months. That's when I'm coming out." But um, spectacular, thank you so much. Um, I think we are all walking away with so many different lessons and um, tips and homework. We got homework, y'all. I'm gonna I'm go ahead and get started on that no, tonight. And I no, will I'm dropping the homework. I'm about to start cooking, but I will be on during dinner listening to your your masterclass tonight. So thank you so much. And to the dream builders, thank you so much for your patience. We always find a way to get it going anyway. You all are always so patient with us to make sure that, um, you know, you walk away with these valuable lessons. So again, it's 5.30 on a third, well, what is it now? 6.39 p.m. Eastern time on a Thursday. You I all actually want to... I want to I want to offer them something else. I know, I, I get what you about to say. Go go ahead. finish that up. But I'm letting you know I got more. I got a treat for everybody. I don't usually do this, but I got a treat. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Go, go, spectacular. Drop right. it. <laughs> now, now this is it. If I get if I get at least ten people right to say that they want this, I'm gonna give you guys my my program for free for the first thirty days. I'm gonna give you guys access to it for free. All right, it's called an undergrad. All right, I closed it down like two months ago. But I'm going to give it to you guys. It's my birthday. We I just been feeling great. So, but it's a treat for you guys, okay? It's a treat for you, but I need to see undergrad in the chat box. I'm going to give it to you for free. You can really experience the spectacular experience even before the master class tonight. Uh, but I need to at least see 10 people uh, put undergrad in the chat box. I need to see it right at the bottom. I need to see it, undergrad. Say, I want this. I want this. All right, cool. All right, so look, all you guys got to do is go to spectacularacademy.com slash undergrad. All right, and put in a coupon code 20 start. All right. Put 20 start. Okay, I'm gonna say it again. Spectacularacademy.com slash undergrad. All right. And put in a coupon code 20 start. All right. You're gonna get in for absolutely free. I'm gonna waive it. I usually charge ten thousand dollars for my time for an hour worth of my time. All right, but you guys are gonna get this free game for the first 30 days. OK, it's going to it's, it's only going to be a sign up, a small sign up fee. Like I can't waive that. But the actual membership alone for the first month, get it absolutely free. 20 start is the coupon code. OK. Thank you. Thank you. I see all the happy birthdays. I see the undergrads. I'm going to post it in here for you guys. I don't know so how it is in Cali this. right now, but hopefully you're able to, you know, really enjoy yourself. Um, yes, absolutely. So yes, you guys are undergrading it out in the comments. I love it. <laughs> so you all have that information. Please make sure you take advantage of it. It is not often that you come across a great offer like that. So please take advantage of it. It was spectacular. Dot, no, spectacularacademy.com slash academy. Yep. So oh, 20 start. My team going to be mad, but I don't care. But we're going to do it right now. 20 start. So he's, he's like setting it up right now as he's speaking with you all. So this is the heart of Spectacular. I hope you do follow him. Um, and when you do, let him know where you came from, where you found him from, because that's all hey. about the relationship too. He wants to know. All right. So you guys jump in this thing right now. Make it happen. You guys do it. My team going to be mad. I don't care. Uh, I'm feeling <laughs> good today. You and guys jump in right like, now. Jennifer, let me tell you what he did on the live. Ah, uh, don't do me right. like that. <laughs> All right. All right. So when you guys jump in, put done in the chat box. I want to see, you know, want to see you guys in the training. We got, actually, we got Kevin Harrington uh, is going to be teaching on my le my next class. Uh, he did, he, he was the founder of As Seen on TV. He was the inventor, inventor of that. And he's the member of Shark Tank. Uh, he did uh, seven billion in sales, and uh, yeah, we're gonna be tag teaming, man. It's gonna be me and him. We're gonna do something similar like this, and we're just gonna tag team um, on our next session. So it's gonna be live too. So if you guys enjoyed this, then you're really gonna enjoy that. All right. So hope to see you guys in the program. I'm waving the first month for you guys to really truly enjoy it. Twenty start is the coupon code, and I'm only doing this for Budget Nista. All right. I'm just letting you know this is all love. All right. Oh, thank, right, thank you so you. much, Spectacular. We hope you have a wonderful birthday. And for the Dream Builders, you know, you know where to find us. So we'll see you in the Facebook group, or we'll also see you in the Academy or in the inbox. So have a good afternoon. And again, Spectacular, thank you.